WWDC 2021 just went down, if you missed it. I'm going to do a slight recap with the things I think you're most interested in. Now, this is a developer's conference, so no new iPhones, iPads, Macs. Well, we've been getting a lot of new hardware recently, but there's some really exciting new updates for iOS and iPadOS, and also my upstairs neighbors are renovating their home. <laughs> Hope you're doing well today. My name is Sarah Dietschy, rhymes with peachy. If you are new around here and this video is sponsored by your mom. Just kidding, I'm just making sure you're paying attention because there's a lot to get through. Okay, so I fall into the crowd of the unreasonable crowd who wants a touch MacBook Pro. I know that Apple is never gonna give us the glorious iPad and MacBook combination. I'm a fan of two-in-ones, um, but I just, I want it. I think that would be the ultimate computer. And then the more reasonable crowd, uh, you know, saw WWDC as an opportunity to announce some really pro apps for the new M1 iPad Pro. Yeah, that same chip that's in the new MacBook Pro and MacBook Air, it's now in the new iPad. And well, that didn't happen. However, we did kind of get some nods to the ecosystem, strengthening the workflow. If you both have an iPad and a MacBook, again, I would love to just have a MacBook with a touch screen, but I know that's never going to happen. But with things like Xcode Cloud and also so universal control, well, the lines are blurring. And now it's not as much about using your iPad as a MacBook or your MacBook as an iPad, but hey, they all have their place in the beautiful Apple ecosystem. You need to buy all of them because they all work together so well. Universal control is actually really cool and it's an update with the new Mac OS, iPad OS, iOS. That's what WWDC is all about. And it allows you to just use your mouse across your MacBook, across your iPad, and even your iMac so it can work beyond two devices and they showed this really cool example where you can drag a graphic that you make in Procreate on your iPad all the way over to your iMac and drop it into Final Cut. So it shows this really collaborative process between all of these machines and so Apple is definitely getting me thinking, okay, again, you don't need the all-in-one Apple device because look, just get all three. They work so well together. Um, and you know, that's something that Logitech actually has a cool software called Flow. Um, the MX Master mouses and the keyboards have it to where you can flow in between different desktops. So that's been a thing over in Logitech land. You can do it in between Windows and Mac computers. But now this is going to be built in for all of your Apple devices. So um, that's really cool. And kind of a theme of WWDC is them building those cool features that other companies do with their software or hardware and just build it straight into uh, their own software. So, you know, this is a conference celebrating developers and, you know, they talked about how uh, over the years they've paid out, let's see, what was the number? Over $230 billion to developers. So it's definitely a celebration for developers, um, but it's like almost, okay, if your app or your service is too good, well, Apple's just gonna add it in their own ecosystem. So. Don't make it too good. <laughs> Tim Cook walked out to an auditorium of Memojis, and I will say the transitions are just getting more creative with Apple Keynotes, and Craig is the star of these. Okay, so let's start with the new iPad OS, which remind you, this is just a preview. We're not gonna see the stuff until fall. I wanted to make sure I saw WWDC before finishing my M1 iPad review. My iPad reviews have been like 30 minutes in the past, so they're, they're pretty thorough. Um, but something that I mentioned in my last one that I just, I love widgets, and I was like, I wanna put widgets everywhere. I don't wanna be just stuck in the today view, and guess what? Now you can put widgets, well, everywhere. App library is now built into the dock, so you can hide apps, you can hide pages, so you just have so much more control of that home screen. Multitasking on the iPad has gotten really great. However, it requires these uh, gestures that you have to do that, you know, I know them just because I sat and learned them. But people like my parents or my grandparents who use their iPad all the time, they just, they don't understand all of those things. So they're trying to make it more simple with having a menu at the top of your iPad that shows you, hey, you can slide this app into this window or the left window. When you're multitasking with two apps, you can also bring something up in the center and and then you also have a multitasking dock now, which um, honestly is cool, I think, uh, but it almost, I think, just makes it more complex for the people who already aren't using multitasking, but that's something I have to play around with before I actually give my opinion about it. They called it a shelf, um, which just reminds me of one of my favorite iPad apps, Yoink, which is like a shelf 
Health app, it's, I mean, the use is pretty different. Like it's kind of used as a copy and paste doc almost, but check out that app. If you're an iPad user, it's actually really helpful. The new multitasking kind of reminds me of this app called Magnet that I actually use on my MacBook Pro to make it more similar to Windows snapping, just cause I love how Windows management on Windows works. Notes is getting a facelift and oh my gosh, Notes is just becoming so powerful as a fan of apps like OneNote and Notion and Millinote. There's so many amazing tools out there to collect your thoughts and work, uh, you know, with teams. But this Notes app, you know, I already know people who run their empires like off of their, their iPhone off a of Notes app. And now this is becoming so powerful because now shared notes include mentioning people where uh, if I share a note with my mom, Jeannie, and I go at Jeannie, hey, what do you think about this? She's gonna get a notification on her phone that, hey, I need to go to that note and answer, you know, whatever. And now notes has tags. Oh, this has been a huge request for a while. Um, you know, you can hashtag grocery, hashtag work, hashtag all of your different projects. And it's such a great way to not only search your apps, but also organize them beyond um, already the folder structure that you have. So I don't know, I can see if you are 100% in the Apple ecosystem, you only have Apple devices, I mean, notes is getting very impressive. For people who have devices across ecosystems, I just highly recommend OneNote um, because it works so great on iPhone, iPad, Windows 2-on-1s, Windows computers, Mac desktops, like everything. It's kind of the best note-taking app that is just everywhere. I have a pretty long video about OneNote and I'll link it up above. Another added feature, quick note, you just swipe up from the bottom of your iPad, um, which usually does a screenshot. So maybe it's actually in a different corner because I just realized I just did a screenshot. <laughs> um, but you swipe up and you do a quick note. And if you're in a Safari tab, it basically automatically uh, takes that link of whatever web page you're on and maybe you want to write down a note hey this is for XYZ and those quick notes will save your Safari URL um, save your note and then you can also swipe in between the different quick notes that you've been taking click on it to um, you know make it full screen It's just super powerful and a lot of the new features from Apple not just in iPad OS but iOS is a lot of new cool AI features where hey it's gonna be able to detect phone numbers text notes and pictures which is so cool, um, but something that we are familiar with, again, with these other services that we know and love, but now Apple is bringing it into the ecosystem. That's Google Photos, also Microsoft Lens, or uh, used to be called Office Lens. Now a lot of those features that we see in those apps are now in iOS and iPadOS. The iPad has had Swift Playgrounds for a while where you can learn how to code in a fun way, but now you can build an entire app from your iPad using Swift Playgrounds. So Oh, if you're upset that Apple didn't announce Final Cut or Logic for the iPad since we have that M1, well, you can build your own app in Playgrounds. Yeah, a lot of people are gonna be bummed that we actually didn't have more updates with the iPad with professional apps because people are saying, hey, we have one of the most powerful chips ever now in an iPad. And well, the software kind of does seem lacking in terms of content creation, uh, 3D rendering stuff. I mean, John, who does so much uh, drawing and animation, he loves Procreate. I think Procreate is like the darling of the iPad, but when it comes to other fields yeah like we need more pro apps it just didn't it didn't come we're gonna have to be more patient okay moving on to iOS 14 so many cool things involving FaceTime they're introducing spatial audio to FaceTime so when you're talking to multiple friends if you have multiple friends <laughs> It's gonna make it sound like you are right in the room with them. Voice isolation uses machine learning to cut out all the noise in the background to really focus on your voice so there's no distractions. Like if your daughter is using a leaf blower in your kitchen, like, okay. You now have grid view like Zoom and well, a lot of other cool features like Zoom, like Discord, wow. Like FaceTime, it was already everything and now it's just gonna take over the world because guess what? Androids can use FaceTime. Well, in a certain way, basically if you have a friend 
who has an iPhone or a Mac device and sends you a FaceTime link, you can log in, video chat them just via the web link. You can also do portrait video during these FaceTime calls and the ability to create links for FaceTimes in the future, well, that's like Zoom, Google Meets functionality right there. And now that it doesn't matter, if you actually have an Apple device, I mean, that is huge. With SharePlay, you can watch movies or listen to music with your friends while also FaceTiming them. And also with screen sharing, well, they showed, hey, look, you can look at Zillow listings with your friends, which honestly sounds great. And where were these features actually during the pandemic? Because I mean, this stuff would have been great a year ago. But again, that would require friends to, to FaceTime with. There are a lot of great new features with the new iOS and overall it's just getting smart, like really smart. It's pretty cool. You could take a picture of a shipping label and tap the tracking number literally like on the picture and it reads the numbers and it'll take you immediately to FedEx. So it, it takes real world words, numbers, all of the things and, and translates it to information that you can use, whether it's in maps or Googling it or copy and pasting it or even translating it. My personal new favorite feature is the fact when you put on do not disturb, the other person I'm messaging you knows that you have do not disturb on. So it's like, you know, chill, do not disturb me. Kind of like aim away messages back in the day, good times. And notifications are changing now. It'll be in a nice little notification summary. Uh, your text messages and messages will still stand on their own. But I think that is great because personally, I turned off all of my notifications besides the messages um, because it just got so messy. So this is hopefully going to help clean those things up. And then another great feature is focus. You can essentially have different modes that your phone goes into. So so work, personal mode, literally the home page of your phone is going to change depending on what mode you're in. So maybe it's chill mode, you know, you have Netflix, you have social media, but if it's work mode, you have Slack, you have different widgets, and that also informs what notifications you're going to get. So, you know, I think the, the lines have definitely blurred in between work and life this past year, but I think this might help. Having somewhat of a clean line between those two, and at least maybe if you don't have Twitter on your home screen when you're in work mode, you'll, you'll be more laser focused. Hopefully these different modes can be triggered with shortcuts. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of customization you can do. We got some new software updates for AirPods. It now helps the hard of hearing uh, basically elevate the voice of the person that they're talking to. You can now find your AirPods via the Bluetooth pinging. If you lose them, it'll even notify you if you leave that restaurant or leave wherever without your AirPods. Spatial audio, spatial audio, spatial audio. Um, now you can use AirPods or uh, the headphones with the new Apple TV and it will use spatial audio. And well, this was a long event, but I don't want this video to be as long as the event. So uh, let's just go over very briefly the other stuff. You know, Apple uh, at the core of Apple is privacy. So they talked a lot about privacy in Safari in mail with the pixel tracking, the marketing tracking. I mean, I feel like companies are going to hate Apple. They're like Apple. We're just trying to sell people some stuff. But Apple's priority is the consumer, you, and making sure you have have the best experience on their devices. If you get locked out of your iCloud account, now account recovery is easier than ever. You can basically add a list of trusted friends or family members. They will get a code sent to them. You can get back into your account. And they've also introduced something called legacy contacts. So um, if a family member passes away, you will be able to get into their device, which, you know, kind of seems morbid, but if you think about it, your entire life is on your devices. You'll now be able to access their account their photos or thousands of photos um, and yeah that just that makes sense there's now iCloud plus with some security updates a lot of updates to watch OS in terms of health Apple has been working closely with health professionals to make sure that hey if you have lab results coming back or you need to talk to your doctor just that data is you know somehow there on your phone for you to digest it in a way that makes sense and also you can share your health stats your health tracking that you do on your devices with your doctor or trusted family members. And last but finally not least, the new Mac OS is called Monterey, Monterey, Mon Monterey. Universal control that I talked about earlier has to be the coolest feature, being able to seamlessly drag and drop things from your iPad to your MacBook to your MacBook to your iMac. 
very Apple. You can now airplay to your Mac. So say if you have a song or a presentation on your phone, you can airplay it to your iMac, use the great speakers, or maybe you're drawing something on your iPad and you wanna present it on the bigger screen of the iMac, you can now do that via airplay. We have a brand new Safari that looks pretty clean, I guess. You know, it has group tabs like Chrome does. Um, you can use extensions and stuff like that. And also shortcuts have now come to Mac, which is cool. We should probably maybe do an entire video about that if I find some useful new shortcut workflows. And well, I think I'm gonna leave it there. Uh, this event, you know, wasn't like life-changing or anything. I think people's expectations get really high when you start adding on that wish list of I want Final Cut and Logic on my iPad, come on. And then when they don't deliver, you know, it is kind of sad. There were no hardware announcements. There was a lot of rumors that, hey, we're gonna see a new MacBook, potentially new AirPods, but no hardware announcements at all. And people like to joke like, uh, you know, this is a developers conference. You guys are stupid for thinking that, you know, there's gonna be hardware. Well, it, like traditionally there has been hardware at a lot of WWDCs. Not every single one, but many. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. And if you want more videos about tech, creativity, well, subscribe to me, Sarah Dici Rhymes the Peachy. And well, until next time, stay peachy. Okay, bye.